Let's continue talking about somatic recombination that gives rise to antibody diversity. Uh, now we're going to talk about the light chain gene. So, light chain gene must give rise to the light chain protein. That is true. Um, the light chain gene is going to have diversity in it. So that means that you can have different possible light chain proteins. So we saw the heavy chain gene was present on chromosome 14. The light chain gene, uh, or the region of DNA that contains the light chain, it's actually the locus, it's a larger area of DNA, um, there are actually two light chain genes. On chromosome 22, there's the light chain lambda DNA, or gene locus, and on chromosome 2, there's the light chain kappa, heavy uh, light chain locus. So you have two different light chain genes that your DNA, that your B cells can choose from. They will both give rise to light chain protein, but only one of them gets um, activated. So if we look at the light chain genes, both the lambda and the kappa, they contain gene segments, just like the heavy chain locus. So if we look at the light chain lambda locus on chromosome 22, there are 30 variable gene segments and four joining gene segments, followed by a constant gene segment. There are no D or diversity gene segments you can see in the light chain genes. On chromosome 2, you have another light chain gene, light chain kappa, uh, and that has about 35 variable gene segments and about five joining gene segments, followed by the constant gene segment. So when your B cells are developing in your bone marrow, one of these genes gets chosen to be recombined and make protein. So again, we're going to have somatic recombination occurring, permanent changes in the DNA that are going to give rise to a protein, a functional protein. So you can see in the variable regions and the variable gene segments, you have lots of star codons. Everyone has a star codon. And so what's going to happen is one of the genes gets chosen by an enzyme, which we'll talk about later, and one of the variable regions, ver I'm sorry, variable gene segments gets chosen and cut and, co and stitched to one of the joining gene segments, which gets cut and stitched to one of the constant gene segments. And what you are now left with is a functional light chain gene. So before, in those two genes at the top, you can't turn on those genes. Those genes won't make any proteins. They will only make protein after somatic recombination has occurred. Um, so stitching one V and one J together with one C will give you a functional gene. So now you have a start codon, you have a stop codon, and you have an open reading frame that can be read, transcribed, translated, and now you make protein. Right? So that again is somatic recombination now of the light chain gene. And so um, that's going to give you a protein. Part of the protein is variable because it can come from different gene segments. Part of the protein in cons is constant because it comes from a constant gene segment. So if the B cell on the left there chooses one of the V's and one of the J's, um, that's going to give it an open rating frame, which gives it an amino acid sequence that gives it some three-dimensional structure. Let's say the second B cell, it's going to choose a different V and a different J. It could even choose the different other, the other light chain gene. And if it does, when it's that uh, variable region is transcribed and translated, the amino acid sequence is going to be different. And if it's different, it's got to give a different three-dimensional structure. So now we have variety or diversity in the light chain protein. And again, that came about via this process called VDJ or somatic recombination. I know there are no Ds here, but the whole process of BDJ recombination refers to the cutting and pasting of the gene segments present in the heavy chain genes and the light chain genes. We will do an activity in class that will help you mimic this process so you can see it for yourself. So how many different possible light chain genes or light chain proteins can a B cell make? Can a B cell choose from, if you will? Well, you've got... Um, in the light chain uh, lambda gene, I really should put it there. In the light chain lambda gene, there are 120 different possible combinations of variable and joining gene segments, putting them together. 
For the light chain kappa gene, there's about 35 times 5, 175 different combinations of variable regions that you can make there. If you add those together, then you're going to get 295 possible light chain proteins that a B cell can choose from. So, that brings us to the process of antibody diversity, right? When B cells are developing in your bone marrow, what's going to happen to them? They're going to recombine their heavy chain genes to make a functional heavy chain protein, and they're going to recombine their light chain genes to make one functional light chain protein. So the B cell on the left, it will choose some V and some D and some J, recombine them together to make a functional gene that makes a functional protein. And that's what the protein will look like, right? So the B cell on the left and the B cell on the right, the odds of them making the exact same heavy chain protein, it's rare. It's we said one in 5,520. The cells then recombine their light chain genes. They choose one V and one J for which one of those light chain genes, uh, stitch it together to a constant gene segment and make a functional light chain gene, which can transcribe and translate to a functional light chain protein. And so the B cell on the left, it has chosen one variable and one joining gene segment in one of the genes. So it's got a structure in its variable region of the light chain gene, of light chain protein, I should say. And on the right, you've got a, this B cell, and it's maybe choosing a different V and a different J, and it, like I said, could even choose the different light chain gene. So what that means is if there are about 5,000 co possible combinations of heavy chain proteins to be made, and 295 possible light chain proteins that could be made, then the, um, there are about 1.6 million possible combinations of heavy chain and light chain protein. So that means when cells are developing in your bone marrow, the odds of two B cells coming out looking identical, at least talking about these uh, processes that give rise to variety in your variable regions, uh, the possible combinations, you have 1.6 possible combinations. So the odds that two B cells are going to look identical are 1 in 1.6 million. And actually, the number is going to be higher because there's another way to generate antibody diversity, which we'll talk about in a later video. So antibody diversity arises from somatic recombination, the choosing of different VDJ reach gene segments to stitch together, to give you different open reading frames, to give you different amino acid sequences. That's one way to generate antibody diversity or immunoglobulin diversity. The other way is the different combinations of heavy chains and light chains. So while it is possible that the, uh, these two B cells would choose the exact same V and D and J, um, it is unlikely that they're going to uh, include the exact light chain V and J as well. So the yeah, odds of that happening, like we said, are about 1 in 1 1.6 million. So again, when your B cells are developing in your bone marrow, you have a lot of random recombination going on, giving you and generating different antigen binding sites. And, right, and so I've sort of highlighted there at the end here, these are the antigen binding sites. And these are generated randomly via these processes known as somatic recombination.